There's yeah. a theme with the uh, with the Cardinals. A lot of uh, a lot of players talking about giving glowing reviews, whether they were asked to or not, of Kyler Murray. Okay, uh, we've played a few of them. I'll play a few of them here, but I'm I'm going to start with this one. This is Michael Carter uh, on Bickley Murata yesterday talking about the Cardinals quarterback. The more I've like got to know him, I don't I, I don't I don't think he ever leaves here. Like, I'm in the building right now. I don't think he leaves here. I know. Um, he's always in here. He's the freaking first person in. I'm sure. He's, I'm sure he's the last person out. I know for a fact he's probably the last person out. Cause you know, there's sometimes where I try to be the first person. I might like last week. I just one time I was like, you know what? Let me just try to be the first person in. And I think I'm. I think we had a work. I think we had a meeting at nine fifteen. I think I might have got here at like seven fifteen maybe. <laughs> yeah, that, that's two hours, you know. Yeah. At Lambo already here. That's great. <laughs> wow. So, um, well, I I don't know. I'd rather not disclose his car, but uh, man, it's just he's always in the building. So, um, a lot of a lot of credit to him, and you know, having being around someone like him, and you know, I, I don't even think I've ever told him this. You know, I don't think he knows this, but because I don't really talk as much as people think I do. But <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, nah, seeing him around the building, seeing him always grinding, and uh, you know, it, it sets the example because you know he is the leader of the team and. Makes everybody around them go harder, myself included. Okay, where do you start on that one? Because for me, it's the Lambo. <laughs> he said the, he means a Lamborghini, right? That, he, I, he must I, mean that. I, yes, I mean, I have seen <laughs> Kyler drive. As opposed to what alternative? I know, exactly. The Lambo. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, it's got to be that. But I've seen Kyler drive stuff before, and it, it wasn't a Lamborghini, but this was not this year. So That's you know. so what Kyler, is he? Well, I mean, what does he make? Enough. Is it 230 enough. Like, how much is his contract? He's doing okay. Enough to, to buy two cars? Is that <laughs> what you're saying? He's kind doing of. okay. All right? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah. Yeah, he's don't, fine. don't worry about Kyler. <laughs> Kyler's doing fine. He's, he's going to do okay yes, financially. Okay, right. Um, okay, Although he so, doesn't need the money if he never leaves the facility. Okay, <laughs> he's yeah. just there all day, every and day. How many guys have we heard this from, though? Yeah. I tell you, the first thing that jumped out to me from that quote was I just, it's go back two years. Go back after the loss to the Rams in the playoffs. And if I if I played that quote for you and said, okay, who is he talking about? You, you would not have said Kyler Murray two years ago. You would not have. And yet, to your point now, Wolf, it is unanimous, man. It is. It is. It's unanimous. A lot of guys like that was on Bickley and Murata. I don't know what the exact question was. I'm sure they asked him ab- about Kyler Murray. Okay. But there are plenty of times. I mean, you and I have had conversations with with guys out there that we're not even asking them about Kyler Murray, and they bring up how consistently he is there to the point where it does just sort of feel like he lives there. Yes, absolutely. And this is really, really good. This is a good trend right now, and you'd love to see this trend continue. Of course. But never forget, Basin Ornings, and Kyler knows this better than anybody else. It's what you do on the field, first and foremost. It always is going to come back to that. And it's, it's a situation where I've seen this. If Kyler Murray starts playing the game and starts running the ball in particular and starts doing it with a little bit more zeal, like what we saw at the end of last year in particular, the last four games, Of the season, I'm not talking about how well the Arizona Cardinals ran the ball. I'm talking about Kyler making a couple of decisions to dive head first as opposed to sliding because he knew he had to. Yeah. If he starts doing that more, can I just tell you right now, there is nothing like rallying around a player that you love who's a diminutive guy, and yet he's out there playing in a very fearless kind of way. Can I just tell you right now, you will, you'll go to the ground to defend and protect uh, one of your teammates when he's small. That's the reason why everyone loves Buda Baker. And I'm not just talking about the Arizona Cardinals and players inside that. I'm talking about everybody all throughout the league and coaches yeah. as well. They love him because he's not big. And yet he plays huge. Uh, how many players have we talked to on the Buddha thing that are new to the Cardinals this year? And it's like, hey, what did you think of Buddha before you got here? Yes. And, and they 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 all get the same look on their face. Like especially if they're a defensive player, they just smile because uh, as a defensive player, you can truly appreciate what he's doing. Uh, the Kyler the Kyler thing is, I, I think it's, I mean, I think it's fair to 
to have a lot of optimism about a guy who, by a lot of accounts in the past, wasn't putting in this much time away from the field. Now, I think I think things got exaggerated the other way, where they were like, oh, this guy's not studying. Or, I, I think that got exaggerated. But he wasn't living at the facility, yeah, by all right. accounts, a couple years ago. And a couple years ago, he was Rookie of the Year. And as you said, he's a couple Pro Bowls in there, and he was an MVP candidate for the first half of the the 21 season. Now, that stuff doesn't mean anything now, except if you want to put them together and say, well, we've already seen what he can do just based on raw talent alone. If he is now, if he has doubled or tripled or quadrupled down or whatever it is off the field, I think it's fair to expect a big season from him. Now, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying that means 11 wins for the Cardinals, but it kind of reopens the discussion of, like, what what exactly is the ceiling for him? Yes, I, I would agree with everything you just said right there. I mean, I, I do expect an awful lot out of Kyler Murray going forward. I Maybe it's way too much, but I think he's going to be in an offense he's never been in. And when you sit there and you talk about what, what it was like in the Cliff Kingsbury offense, of course, right, and you know how much respect and regard I have for Cliff, yet at the same time, Never forget, brothers, when he first came into the league, this was basically the air raid. This was a college offense. And it's one of the reasons why they drafted Kyler Murray is because it was a it was a college offense and he was going to orchestrate this college offense. And that college offense is not very involved. It isn't. It's not. They dumb it down. They simplify it because they want to move quick. Get on the ball and snap the ball. And remember early on, this was a thing with the Arizona Cardinals. This is what they were doing. And it's the reason why Kyler really didn't have to study so much because of how base and how well he already knew the offense. So to me, now all of a sudden as he's expanding his game and he's expanding it and evolving his game, especially from under center, This is why he's got to study more. And maybe this is one of the reasons why he's always there at the facility. He's learning the pro game and learning how to lead at the pro level. We've we've talked about all the potential catalysts for this change in Kyler Murray. And I just, I have to, and look, I don't know this, but I have to think on, on some level, you're talking about a guy that was used to having a lot of success all the way up through high school, college, whatever, right? Huge. I have to think at some point he took losing personally. That I mean, that to me is is one of the biggest things. I know the injury. Maybe people, maybe people in his life were like, "Hey, man, why don't you embrace the role of leader because it'll make your life easier. It'll help out your team." I'm sure there was a lot of factors, but I have to think on some level, Kyler Murray was just, "I'm just sick of losing." It has to be. That has to be a huge part of this, to to be consistently putting in this much work off the field, not doing it for show. I think it also was the ACL and the time that it gave him to reevaluate who he is and where he is and what he was doing. Thanks for watching Wolf and Luke. Tap to see more and click the button in the middle to subscribe to Arizona Sports.